So let's start to create a background bar here. So if I refresh, you can see here we have this bar and this background here is like the track of it. We're going to create this right now. So to add a background behind the bar chart in ChartJS4, what we need is the border template, which you can find here on ChartJS3.com getting started this link. Just grab the border template there. Secondly, if you want to support my channel, check out this Patreon page here from patreon.com slash ChartJS where you can support my channel. So what we're going to do here now is we're going to put in a background and to do this, what I need here is a custom plugin. So what I'm going to say here, in the options, say comma, we're going to say plugins. And then I'm going to put a bracket here and then we're going to say here, uh, background bar or something like that. Let's copy this. And then I'm going to just create a constant equals ID for the background bar. So we can set later on, or this is for plugin, we can use it later on to make it a bit more advanced. And then what we want to do is we want to draw. So when would we like to draw the so-called background here behind the bars? So that would mean before we draw the data sets or the bars, after or after or before that, we draw first our background. So what I'm going to say here, chart, arc, and plugin options. So once we have this, I'm going to say here constant, and then we're going to do here an object destructuring. And the object destructuring here, if you've never heard of this, check out my video charges object destructuring. So what I want to do here, I want to have the data, I want to have the CTX, I want to have the chart area, and specifically I need to know the top, bottom. Well, we don't need them all, I guess, but I'll just put them all in there. Uh, left, right, and then the width and height. If you don't understand what I'm doing here or what this truly is, check out chart.js, uh, uh, I'm just saying chart.js chart area. Once I'm doing, once I have this, I want to have the scales. I want to have the X and Y scale as well. So we have these variables. So now I can say a ctx.save to save the default mode. And then what I want to do is the following. What I need is basically I need to know the segment. This is the segment here. I need to know how many pixels is from this point all the way to there. To calculate the segment, what I need to do here is I need to know the width. This is the width of the chart area, which means from this point all the way to that point here. It calculates the pixels. So I'm going to say a constant segment equals, and then what I want to do is at the width, divide by how many I'm going to know or I have here seven segments. So I know we have to divide by seven, but I want to soft code this. So I'm going to say here, divide by data dot data sets index zero dot data. Uh, oh, sorry, not even like that. That's not even necessary. We can just go from data directly into the labels because we have seven labels here and that's what, what's perfect for us. So labels dot length. By doing this, if we do a console log now, we should get here the segment value. Save that, refresh, open the developer tab, and then console, it has been misspelled, my bad. Let's save that, refresh. There we are. We know it's approximately 109 pixels, and if I move it, probably you'll see it will extend. Am I correct? Oh no, because I need to refresh like that. All right, so then it will work. This is important for us, so we know now how we can calculate this, but we're not done, of course. But of course, first of all, Let's draw the item. So how do we draw this? So first of all, I'm going to say ctx uh, fill style to give it a color. So if you have a rectangle, what color we want to give it? Let's make this gray for now. And I'm use the British gray. So we use the gray with the A for alpha. Next, what I want to do is I want to have the rectangle. I'm going to say the fill rectangle. So we're going to fill up this rectangle. And what we're going to do here is putting the X starting position, the Y starting position, and then we have here the width and the height. So what we do know is a few things. The first thing what we do know is our starting point will be based on the index number here. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use a built-in command from chart.js. So say here, x.getPixel for value, and then we just put in here index number zero, meaning it will get Monday, which is index zero. So once we have this, the next thing what I want to do here is the height basically where I want to draw it. Since we're going to draw from top to bottom, so I need to start at the very top. So I'm going to say here for the Y position will be the top. 
because this should be here top and I'm going down. So then what I want to do here is we have the width and the width should be the segment that we just calculated. Finally, here we have the height and the height is this item here. Copy that, put that in there. Save that, refresh. And as you can see, it gets in position, but there will be two items we need to uh, consider. First of all, we have to move this here and then you do notice that this one is slightly thicker or bigger than our bar width. And the reason why is we calculate only how big this segment is. So what I'm going to do here, first of all, how do we move this one in position? So what I will say here, just for now, it's going to say here, um, we need to move basically the half of the segment. So I'm going to say here, minus segment divided by two. So we get the half of it, and then that will be deducted from there, moving it to the left. So now we have this part. This is fine, but we're not there yet, because look at this here. So the reason why this happens is of the border percentage and the category percentage. So we're going to say here, uh, or sorry, not the border, but bar percentage, which is by default 0 0.8, if I'm not mistaken. And then we have the category percentage, which is by default 0 0.9, so 90% of the entire segment. So if I save that, now well, you can see here, apparently it is getting more narrow. So maybe this was just like that, something like that, I guess. This should be it. Anyway, this information must be applied on our segment width, so we can get our bar width. So what I'm going to say here, constant bar width will be the segment multiplied by what exactly? By the bar percentage, which is 0 0.9, and then category percentage. But of course, I want it soft coded, so I'm going to extract the values from here. So I'm going to say here, how do we get there? Data dot data sets index zero. And then what we can say here is the uh, bar percentage. And once we did that, I want to multiply it again, but this time not for the bar percentage, but now the category percentage. Uh, per percentage. Make sure you spell this correctly or else it will not work, of course. Category percentage here. So once I did this, I'm going to say here, instead of the segment, I'm going to do the bar width, save, refresh. All right, so this works, but then I need to calculate here the segment, or this needs to be replaced with the bar width, then we get the full width here. So this works nicely. So what if I say now I want this to change, I make this one, and as you can see, it changes and then everything else changes along. So this works nicely. We're not done yet. And the reason why is we need to now loop through all of these. So I guess we can do a for loop in here, but we could do a sort of for each loop, it's one or the other. So what I want to do here is, um, I guess we can do that with a for loop. I think the for loop is just the easiest one. We're going to say here, I, uh, we have here the let i equals zero. And then we're going to say here, we want to say, uh, we we're going to loop i as long as what we have here, this information, which would indicate the length, which is seven items, then i plus plus. Then we could change this i here, cut this out, put that in there. Save, refresh, there we are. So now we have this all very nicely and maybe these should be all solid numbers. So I'm just going to put one in here and just delete everything else, make it simple. All right, so that looks better. So what I want to do now is just a final thing. So imagine we have this gray here, but I can imagine you might say, well, I want this customized. Let's make the professional structure for this, like a real plugin. So in here we have this plugin, but then what I'm going to do here, comma, I'm going to hit plugins. And then in this plugin, I'm going to select now the bar or the background bar. I use this value here, the ID, so it will understand that this is the reference. And then we're going to say here, in here we say here, bar color. And this color can be, let's make this um, gray or let's make this black for now. So you will see here now, if I save this, of course it will not work yet because I didn't connect the object here. This here allows us to go into the options nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this option here, change this here, and then I'll say here dot 
and then we're going to select here the bar color and you might say why are we skipping this one the background bar and the reason why is because it understands it because of the ID that we indicated here if you don't have an ID it will not understand this so if I do this now save refresh now we have it black so let's start to say one more thing let's make this uh, RGBA 000 and then here 0 0.2 save that refresh there we are and it works nicely